Why are tiger moms vanishing in America? There might be more to this than you think. Yeah, you know the kids that used to study so hard listening to Jay Chow, it was so sappy. Now they study a little bit hard to Billie Eilish, but they are happy. <laughs> oh, we got to talk about it. This article was written by NBC Asian America. The dissolution of tiger moms and the new face of Asian American parenting. I'm letting my kid be quite feral. Jennifer Chan, a mother of two, told NBC News she just runs free. What's happening, Andrew? No Whoa. more tiger moms. All right, guys. We got about 13 reasons why tiger parenting is starting to vanish in America from the second generation's. A lot of kids who are raised by tiger parents themselves, they don't want to continue. And there's obvious reasons and maybe some not so obvious reasons. So please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of Hot Pop Boys as we delve into this. Re David, will there be any more tiger parents in the future? Well, let's just talk about it because I believe about 14 years ago, Amy Chua, Andrew, who was a Yale law professor, we actually met her. She wrote this book, The Battle Hymn of the Tiger Mom, and it went super viral at that time. Right. She didn't create the Tiger Mom, of course. She just kind of put a label on it uh, and it got but, really popular. But I'll tell you this, Andrew. Still to this day, Asian mom sketches about them hitting their kids if they get an A- minus or B+, plus are still going viral as of one year ago. Let's run the clips. Hit my child. I am General Tao, your senior drill instructor. When I am done with you, you will become fully trained Asian mothers. Cold, heartless, void of positive affirmation. Weapons of psychological and emotional damage. I hear? Oh yeah, speaking of my son, he practicing right now. Practice very hard. That's okay, we can keep going. Oh, so listen, um, the article is primarily focusing, Andrew, on Gen X, second gen parents, and older millennial Asian parents that were born in America saying, I don't want to be my mom. Andrew, the number one reason is the parents simply don't want the trouble. They don't want the trouble. And also there's a cost. And not just the piano lessons that you got to pay for or all these other things that you want to get them to, but it's just the cost on you. You got to do the work. Tiger parenting is a lot of work to be hovering over them, watching right. them, telling them to do this, scheduling this. Well, Andrew, everybody's tiger mom was not distracted by social media. Right. In fact, everybody's tiger mom literally may not have even known what social media was. Yeah. I mean, a lot of tiger parents, a lot of mothers... That was their entire job at home. The dad just provided, and then the mom was the tiger mom, and that was her job. Right, you're saying that that was the sole focus of almost her mission in life. Right, right. Well, other parents, a lot of younger parents, Andrew, they got they, they want to raise their kids to be successful, but they got some other missions to care about themselves, right? right. Uh, point number two, Andrew, um, a lot of second-gen parents that are born in America are relaxing and probably don't view success in the same hyper-conventional way that their parents did. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think that a lot of tiger parents, and I think they mentioned this in the article, but it's like, what is like the success that the tiger parents had in mind was a very narrow image of success. And now that you're Americanized, you know that there are so many different ways to be successful and still be proud and still be a good person. And you don't just have to be a doctor or a lawyer, which is requires tons of schooling and, and a lot of degrees. I, I do think that people seeing all these people get rich off like investments and crypto and stuff while they were like slaving away, working 80 hour weeks at a very brain cognitive intensive STEM job did make people go, oh, maybe I'll just get my kid to be on the next big technology. Right. Uh, point number three, Andrew, parents that are, you know, second gen Asian Americans don't want the strained relationship with their children that they had with their parents. All right. Let me ask you this, David, to the tiger parents or the people who went through tiger parents growing up. And, and there's different levels of it, yeah, right? Yeah. Low, middle, high. But like, I don't think a lot of those tiger parents really thought or cared about straining the relationship. I think later in life, they regret it because they're like, damn, you know, <laughs> due to what I was doing, you know, it made my children not really have a good, uh, they kind of wanted to resent me now. You know, but like, I think back then, they were just doing what they thought was right. And they thought being strict was right. They thought not saying I love you was right. They thought uh, not letting you go outside and play with that person was right. They thought drilling you for hours on end was right. right. Was they the were almost right running thing. a Confucian Shaolin monk style playbook, Andrew, in a time where people, the other 
American parents were not on the Shaolin Monk Confucius train at all. Yeah. And also, listen, why would you want to strain a relationship with your kid, especially nowadays? People are only having like one or two kids. You're not having that many oh, kids. Oh, so you're saying you can't afford to have the one kid that's like kind of got a good STEM career or a law career, but they resent you? Listen. Because you're like, man, I, I only got one kid. What if that kid resents me? Then how am I going to feel? Well, you know, man, back in our generation, man, we had five kids, you know, out of five kids, you can expect one kid to resent you. That okay. That okay. You take right. 20%. It's okay. But now with two kids, that's 50% if one kid resent you. That's true. People are just playing the odds. Um, <laughs> point number four, most parents psychologically, there is an actual psychological theory behind this. Maybe you could call it Freudian or whatever. You know, I didn't get a degree in psychology, whatever psychologist you want to uh, uh, attribute this to, that people raise their children with the voids that they felt like they were missing growing up. So if you felt like you missed emotional attention growing up or uh, what they call emotional reciprocity or tender, loving care, you know what I mean? The, there's so many words to describe these, so many, all the uh, hyper descriptive adjectives. You are going to provide that for your children because you feel like you lacked it growing up. Yeah, it's natural. A lot of parents who made a lot of money, who didn't grow up with much money, they kind of want to shower their kids a lot of the time and have their kids experience the lifestyle that I never had. But in this case, it's not necessarily money. It's just I just want my kid to experience like the American freedom that I never had. Right. Like I always felt like different from everybody at school. Yeah. And like, I just knew I was just getting raised. So in a different universe right. and not to mention guys, let's be honest. If we're talking about tiger moms, if we're not, we're, what you're surprised that a lot of Asian American women don't want that lifestyle. That's exactly the lifestyle that they left. I mean, a lot of the kids in this article are like mixed kids with like white husbands. So it's like, of course, that mom is not marrying the white guy just to right. be a tiger parent. Uh, also, a lot of people got to understand that it is true that the locked inness of the tiger moms partially was driven by actually war, too. By like people going through wars or people seeing some really tough stuff where they're like, no, I'm going to be so hard on my kid that, you know, we're going to we're going to get so far away from the bad times. Mm -hmm. um, point number five. Asian Americans felt shame for their personality growing up and don't want their kids to go through it. So maybe growing up, they felt extra cheap or they felt extra, like they would just have emotional reactions to the way they were raised that people around them that are more Americanized didn't have. And that made them feel weird because they couldn't control that that's how they would uh, viscerally react to things. Yeah, I mean, listen, this Korean American girl from Queens, she said growing up, uh, there almost felt like there was no feelings in the house. And even though she naturally was more of a creative mind Minded person, it always felt like she was being shamed for her personality, even within her family. I'm not talking about at school. She felt like she was shamed by her parents for being a creative right, person. For, for just having a lot of oxytocin. Yeah, and just being maybe thinking a little differently. Oh my goodness, man. It's like it's almost like I will tell you this, man. I've been shamed for shooting long three pointers in the Asian community yeah. before. Well, like, dude, that's you know, how old school people are. So, Even though I was hitting them. Sometimes being raised with old school Asian parents is like being raised in a you know, authoritarian regime. Yeah, it's like being Amish or Mormon, to be honest. It's yeah. like being raised in a I don't want to say cult, but Something like that. Right. Point number six, uh, a lot of Asian American parents are just Americanized in general. So they see like emotions differently. They want to be more on the same page with their kids as far as emotions go. Right. right. They're saying they incorporate more instances I of I love you and other verbal affirmations as well as space for their families to open up and encouragement for their kids to find out who they are as people. Isn't it funny that David's saying the phrase I love you is seen as an American thing. Like having a parent that says, I love you, or even I love you in whatever language it is, hearing that often is seen as a Western thing, even though it yeah. shouldn't be. I think that it even is more, I want to say American parents may even be more effusive than European parents, specifically Eastern European parents. I, I Yeah, maybe. Yeah, right. like I, I think even British people are known for having a stiff British upper lip. More, but I, I think French people be about love, though. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know. You know, America is different. American culture is like an amalgamation of, like, a lot of European cultures mixed with, like, a hypercharged development curve. Right, it, right, it's right. very difficult to explain. Point number seven, gentle parenting allows kids to develop with less hands-on uh, guidance, so it allows the kids to become more of who they are. Right, and also I think that a lot of kids 
who were raised by the hovering tiger parent, but also at the same time um, pampered by them. Because, you know, part of tiger parenting is you're kind of giving the kids so much to do that you're almost, it turns into pampering sometimes. So now if you are more hands off on the parenting, you can make the argument that your kid is going to become stronger by themselves without having you to do everything for them. Right, right, right. You're saying they're, you're, you're getting less coddling, but in a way, it, 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 and, and it's true that the form they will take will be different because you coddled them less, but it'll be a stronger form right, right, of right. who they were meant to be. Right. Uh, point number eight, they view it, uh, a lot of Asian kids just view it as a first generation parent thing because they see the fobs around them still raising their kids like they were raised. So if they have a reference point, like let's say for example, Andrew, you're an Asian American parent in Irvine and there's a mixture of fob parents and ABC parents, let's just say second gen American born Chinese, you're gonna look at what the fobs are doing and it's gonna be more similar to the way your parents raised you and you're gonna have an, an allergic reaction to that. Exactly. Cause you're going to what, like have examples to, to be like, Oh yeah, no, no, no. That's way mm -hmm. too similar to the old ways. Point number nine, there is just a belief amongst gen X parents and millennial parents that their kids will figure it out. Like for example, this guy, Andrew has a, is raising his kids in Seattle. Very geeky place, by the way, as people from Seattle can attest to, we, we are from Seattle. He says his kids want to become video game designers, but he's just like, man, I think they'll figure it out. Wow. Which is uh, very different, obviously, than old school parents. Yeah, I mean, who knows? He probably has a good salary, though. I mean, I think a lot of Tiger parents maybe, yeah, it was just out of a, a deep need to do it. Um, number 10, uh, you know, parents nowadays are just more open to mental health and they value it more. Like that phrase, mental health, was not really used in a Tiger parent household. In a lot of traditional Asian households, what is the word for mental health? It doesn't exist. David, what is even the phrase in Chinese? Do you know? I don't know. Now's a how, ma. I don't know. <laughs> is your brain okay? I brain mean, okay. I would say that, um, you know, everybody that is Asian American, if you grew up in uh, some sort of community thing, a church thing, a lot of cousins, whatever it is, everybody knows somebody who is conventionally successful with a higher than average salary or much higher than average American salary that is unhappy. We personally know somebody, Andrew, who is a lawyer. From, I'm not going to say the law school. From a top five law school and he is the most miserable person that you don't even want to spend five minutes with. Right, right, right. And it's not like he really does anything like horribly bad, but it's just like, a, just get, get, just get, get this guy out of here. <laughs> Point number 11, Andrew, uh, they're just trying to have balance, whether they successfully balance it or not, they're searching for balance. So you think these parents are okay as long as their kid is balanced, even if the kid isn't super successful? Whatever successful means. I think... On a conventional level, there's slightly higher risk probabilities that your kid like is not as conventionally successful as they would be if you had the hardcore tiger parenting with the hands on, you know, shaping and molding all their choices in life and all the forks in the road guiding them. But I think that ultimately they may uh, be happier because oh. you're raising them in a more American way in an American environment. But obviously you probably want to mix it. You want, you want to have a hybrid approach. Right, right, right. Um, I have a couple other reasons. One is uh, all the Asian American parents know a kid who did not grow up with tiger parents that is more successful than them. Yeah. Because every tiger parent kid, every tiger cub that graduated from tiger parenting knows somebody who ended up more successful than them that had less of a tiger parent than them. And they want that. They're like, that's the best move. They're like, I want to... I want to give my kid the best chance of being successful and I don't have to treat them like that. Right, right. Whether they were, uh, oftentimes I think there, there's more of a, it, it impacts them, especially if that kid is Asian. Right, 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 right. right. And also I, another reason why I don't think there's as many uh, tiger parents is that uh, I don't think as much as this third generation Asian kids will have to support their parents later in life. Mm. You know, like there was a sense from your immigrant parents that they're like, you are going to have to take care of me and I will have to live with you and you'll have to support me. So therefore I have to make you the most successful as possible. But now a lot of Asian American parents, maybe it's due to investments or they just don't think about it that way. I, I don't, I think they look at success a little differently. Yeah, I think so. Um, ultimately I'll tell you this, man, there's so many ways you can raise your kids. Andrew, there's a, they call it the carrot 
in front of the stick. You can prod someone from the back. You can coach the hell out of somebody and hope they try to draw out their intrinsic motivation to have their own sort of like robot Roomba mapping for life. You know, there's a lot of ways to get a horse to water. You know what I mean? You can, like we said, you could kick it with spurs in the side. And I just think that there's always pros and cons, but it ultimately boils down, in my opinion, to like, it's just like the NBA. You know, like the Celtics, they can run any defense they want. They could switch, they can den deny, they can pack the post because they have the personnel to do that. For example, Andrew, the Mavs, they're giving up the, their two backcourt guards, right? Kyrie and Luka, they can't guard, so they have to pack the paint and funnel them into the mm. bigs because mm. they don't have the personnel to guard head up. Mm. So I think that everybody's got to look at life more tactically and strategically like coaches do in the NBA because every parent wants to be like the 10 out of 10 parent and everything, right? But not everybody's going to be the Boston Celtics of parents right. where they got five all-stars available. right? You know what I mean? So I think that everybody's got to run the scheme, the best scheme, that they can given the environment with the personnel that they have. And their personnel is like them, their extended family, and I guess whatever city they're raising the kids in. Mm. I mean, I, I, it's just like parents nowadays, man, that grew up in America, they understand what it's like to enjoy America. We know as Asian Americans what it means to enjoy your time in America. A lot of the time, the immigrant parents, the traditional immigrant parents, they didn't fully enjoy America because they didn't really make it yet until maybe later in life. Or they didn't really make it yet until their kids became successful. So they don't really know what it means to live a balanced American life because they never really experienced it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think some Asian American parents that I know are going to be, you know, slight tiger parents. And I think that's still good. I still think you can be strict with your kids. They're your kids. You're going to raise them how you want. But I think we all know we, we grew up in America too much to know, to believe that that strict traditional tiger parenting even if we're capable of it which we may not be is the right way to do it right and uh like we said i don't think this was only limited to the asian community i think a lot of immigrant first generation uh parents who give birth to kids the kids are not going to raise the kids like the older generation right. this article was just hyper focused on the asian one anyway guys let us know what you think about tiger moms vanishing in the comment section below were you raised by one how are you going to raise your kids what do you think is the optimal solution until next time we the hot pot boys we out peace